Hey everybody, Q Paul here. Welcome to the channel. Today's video is going to be a detailed tutorial for those folks who have already been approved for residency at a Mexican consulate and already have that visa placed in their passports. I'm going to be walking you step by step through the process, right from entering Mexico, what kind of paperwork you're going to need to have, to filling out applications. I'm going to be going through it block by block. In other words, this is going to be some pretty exciting stuff. Before I get started, I just want to say that you don't have to do this on your own. Um, actually, it's pretty common to hire somebody to do this for you, and they don't have to be an immigration lawyer or anything. Sometimes they'll use uh, some terms like immigration specialists, or they may use a Spanish term like gestores, which just means facilitators. They're just basically people who know how to do all this paperwork, and they know everybody in the immigration office, so things go more smoothly. If you do plan on hiring somebody to help you, then the only part of the video that you probably should watch is the first part where I talk about entering Mexico. After that, your lawyer, immigration specialist, or facilitator will do the rest. If you've ever traveled to Mexico as a tourist in the past, and well, hopefully you've at least checked it out a couple times before going through the trouble of getting residency, you may remember filling out one of these forms. It's called an FMM. These forms are in the process of being phased out. If you fly into a major international airport, chances are they're not using them. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. But if you enter by land or at some international airports, like they still were using these at Queretaro recently, you're going to have to fill this out just like you would as if you were a tourist. The difference being that the INM agent will write the word canje on top of the form and also on the top of the bottom, which is what they're gonna hand you. And instead of giving you permission to be in Mexico for up to 180 days, like they would when you were a tourist, they're gonna check the box giving you only 30 days. Then they're gonna hand you the bottom of this form. Don't lose it. This is absolutely essential for your immigration packet. Don't panic about the whole 30 day thing. It only means that you have 30 days to get to an INM office, and INM are the Mexican immigration folks, to start part two of the process. That's it. The process doesn't necessarily have to be completed in 30 days. In fact, it often isn't. It really depends which INM office you go to. You're still legally in the country while your application is being processed, even if it exceeds those 30 days, all right? So don't worry. As I mentioned about these FMMs, they are not completed at all points of entry. There's currently a pilot program in effect in Mexico. You're gonna see it at the majority of international airports, and it makes the entire entry system paperless, which means you will not fill this out which sounds easier, right? One less thing to worry about. Well, it is easier for tourists and for folks who have already completed their residency, but not for you in-between folks. If you're still in that Canje status and you enter Mexico through one of those paperless entry points, a good example is Cancun Airport, then later on after you've left the airport, you're going to have to create an account on a government website and generate a copy of an FMM to include with your immigration application. So just so I didn't lose anybody, you will either have a hard copy of an FMM, that'll be this bottom card, or you're going to have to generate one following the steps that I've laid out in this video. This applies to you folks entering by land as well. Now, as of the time of this video, most of the land crossings are still using the paper form, but we're likely to see that change as we move through 2023. I'm covering a lot of information in a single video here. So what I've done is I've broken this video up into chapters so you can easily navigate to the sections that apply to you. Now I'm about to cover the steps to generate an FMM for those people who entered through a paperless entry point. If you already have one of these little cards, you can skip to the next chapter in the video. The first thing you need to do is create an account in the INM system. You can do this before you come to Mexico. In fact, it's recommended you do that, so you know you don't have to worry about it later. To do that, go to the URL that's on the screen. You'll also find a link to it in the description portion of the video and pinned to the top of the comments section. Once you've created an account and verified your email, go ahead and log into the system. Under the section Servicios Disponibles, click on Registrar Documentos. Now this is where you're going to be uploading a picture of your passport. It's just going to be the bottom section with all of the information. You have two options to do this. You can take a picture of it using this portal, which I don't recommend. It's kind of awkward. Or you can go ahead and upload a picture that you already have. I think that's the best option. So now we need to see if the image was good enough for the system to read it. So we're going to click on Validar Documento. If it all worked out, it's going to bring up another page and you're going to see that your information has been filled in on multiple boxes. 
There's still some things to fill in. Most of it's just verification that the passport number is correct, the date of issuance, the date of expiration, things like that. On the upper left, the first box you come to says Tipo de Relación. And basically, this is who's filling out this document. If this is your passport, you're going to choose Titular de la Cuenta. If you're doing this for a family member, you could choose Familiar. And if you're doing it for a friend, you can choose Amigo. Now, under this one for Clasificación Documento, you're going to select Ordinario. When you're sure everything's correct, come down here and do the CAPTCHA. I find this to be the most difficult part of any website I go to because I rarely get it right the first time. If you have multiple family members or friends traveling with you, they don't have to create their own account. You can use just one account. All you have to do is go back in and repeat the steps for entering their documents and their information. Well, now you're all set up in the system and you don't have anything else to do until you get to Mexico. All right, let's fast forward and you have arrived in Mexico. You flew into one of the airports that no longer does any of those handwritten FMM forms, but you're going to need a copy of an FMM because let's say you're completing your residency process. As far as going through immigration, nothing changes there for you to do this. You don't have to say anything to them. After you've already gotten in the country and you've been entered in the system, go ahead and log back into that INM portal. On the home page, you're going to hit Ingresa a Mexico. Under Documentos Registrados, on the lower left, click the little down arrow and you should see your passport and the passports of anyone else you registered under your account. Click on the desired passport, then click the green Iniciar Servicios button. On the next page, you're going to hit the center of that picture down there that says FMMD. You should see the flight you arrived on listed. If you don't, sometimes it takes a few days for it to show up. Okay, you just have to log in later. Over here on the right, under Generar FMMD, you're going to see a check mark. Just click on that. Close that pop-up and click on the second tab that says FMMD Descargar. The flight line should now have a little green box with a down arrow on the right side. Click on that and you'll be able to download a PDF version of your electronic FMM. So the first thing you want to do is go to the URL that appears on the screen. I've also put a link to it in the description portion of the video and I've pinned it to the top of the comment section. Get this little notice out of the way. Come over here to Tramites Migratorios. On this page you're going to find various procedures that you can do uh, at INM. We're going to scroll down here to Expedición de Documento Migratorio por Canje. See that word Canje again? This page is going to tell you everything you need to know about completing the process, but it is in Spanish. You can use a browser translator or uh, paste the URL into Google Translate to, to translate the page. The first thing we're going to be doing is filling out the application. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be leaving it in Spanish so it doesn't confuse people. One of the problems with using translators online is that sometimes you get some odd translations and, you know, it may lead to somebody misunderstanding something. So I'm just going to leave it in the original Spanish. If you did translate your page and we're going through the application, we're still going to be going block by block. The order of the blocks doesn't change. So we're going to click here on Solicitud to get started. Scroll down and come to this section. Um, ¿Qué deseas hacer? What do you want to do? Click on this one here that starts with canjear. In the next box here, we need to be more specific. Click on the first option starting with canje de FMM. In the next section, there's a little box up here if you know your NUE. You're not going to have one of those yet until you complete this process. When you do immigration um, procedures in the future, you're going to be able to click on that and a lot of these fields will fill in for you. First box here is not a mandatory field. You don't have a CURP number yet. You can skip that. Come down to this section, name or names. If you have a first and a middle name on your passport, then you're going to put both of them in this field. Make sure that all of this information matches the information on your passport exactly or your application will be rejected. Next box over is for your last name or last names if you have more than one. Next one over is sex, hombre for male, mujer for female. Next box is your date of birth. You can click on the little calendar here if you want to work it out. If you want to type it in, it's going to be in day, month, and year format. Next one is your current nationality. Now, if you're from the United States, you're going to click on Estado Unidense. 
People always ask me about that one because they're like, I can't find American on there. Next one over is going to be your civil status. I'm going to start from the top and go down. Married, divorced, single, free union, or widowed. Next one down here is going to be your country of birth. If you're from the United States, look for Estados Unidos. This box is for your state, province, or department, depending what country you chose, what would be most appropriate. This box here is your identification document. There's multiple options on there. Click Passport, Pasaporte. Next one is going to be your passport number. Make sure you double check that number because if you get it wrong, they're going to reject your application. We have the country of issue for your passport. This is the date of issuance, again, in day, month, and year format, and the date of expiration in day, month, and year format. You're going to have to have an address in Mexico in order to apply for residency. Now, this is a problem for a lot of people because, well, you just got to Mexico. So if you don't have a permanent place to be, what people typically do is they'll list the address for the hotel or the Airbnb that they're at. Now, later when you actually get a more permanent address, you're going to have 90 days to notify INM of the change. I have another video showing you how to do that. So here on top, this is going to be your area code. And I chose one um, that's in the state of Quintana Roo, so things already filled in. Next one over is state, that automatically filled in for me. Also, um, next to that is going to be the municipality, which already filled in for me. If you get your postal code correct, it should fill in. One thing that doesn't fill in is colonia or the colony. A lot of times this information is not even on the address, so you might want to ask someone what colonia you're in. Calle is the street. Now just list the street, not the numerical. Next one over here is going to be the exterior number, which is normally just your regular address number. If you're in a larger complex, you may have, say, um, an address for the entire complex and maybe an interior apartment number. In that case, you may also have something down here in interior number, numero interior. The interior number is not a mandatory field, but the exterior number is. The next part is asking for a landline phone number. It is not a mandatory field. If you do fill it in, LADA is going to be the area code and the rest of the number is going to go in the box after it. Now this is not set up for foreign numbers. It should be a Mexican landline number. Next section is the email address that you can be contacted at. Down here is where you would put in anyone who's authorized to um, do applications on your behalf or if you want somebody else to receive the notifications. I'm not going to go too much into this. If you choose to use it, you can click down here on Agregar Persona. Down here we have any comments you'd like to add. It's not a mandatory field. If everything looks good, click here on Guardar. You're going to scroll down and it's going to ask if all of the information is correct. If it is, hit C. You're going to be brought to this. I suggest you save this information. If you need to come back in and reprint anything, you're going to need these numbers here. Click here on Imprimir Ahora. Even if you're not able to print at the moment, go ahead and do that and you can save the PDF. It's going to generate a three-page PDF document that you will have to print and bring with you to immigration. After you print it, here on the third page, you're going to have to fill in some information. Over here you have place, and this is going to be, let's say you're doing your residency um, in Playa del Carmen, just put Playa del Carmen in there. Down here, you're going to put your name. Over here, under fecha, is going to be the date, still in day, month, and year format. And below it, where it says firma, that's where the signature goes. So now you're done with the application. So now we're going to talk about the documents you need to bring along with you. Let's go back to this particular screen. And um, it's in Spanish. You can use one of the online translators, like I'm using Google Chrome here, so I can change it into English. Um, if you don't speak Spanish at all, you should probably do that, but you're gonna see some awkward sounding sentences and some things are not gonna be clear, so I'm gonna go ahead and go through them. I'll probably be switching back and forth from Spanish to English, and then you'll kinda of see how some of those translations are really odd. So we're gonna scroll down here to requirements if you're under English, requisitos if you're under Spanish. Click on that. And this is going to tell you what you need to bring along with you. And they're numbered here. And as you can see, one and four, it actually wrote it out. So let's go through the list of things you need to bring with you. Number one here is 
your passport, which should be really obvious. You're gonna to have to have the original and a copy. Make sure you make a clear copy of the photo page in the passport. Government offices in Mexico do not like to make copies, so it is your responsibility to bring them along. I'm actually gonna switch back here to the Spanish. I really don't like the way it looks in the English. The next thing is that visa that you have in your passport, you're gonna to need to make a photocopy of that as well. Next thing down on the list is your FMM, which we've already discussed. Make sure you bring that. Number four on the list is Formato Básico, which is just a form that they actually fill out for you at INM. That's why I don't know why it's on the list. Perhaps because it used to be something we had to fill out, but now they do it. And if we change this into English, you'll see how it looks. Basic format, which might be kind of confusing if you're only using the translation. Before we switch back into Spanish, take a look at number five. Proof that proves the payment of rights for the reception study and where appropriate, the issuance of the immigration document. That sounds kind of odd, doesn't it? We'll switch back into Spanish. And basically what it is, is proof of payment that you pay the fees to get your resident card. Now, when it comes to paying for your resident card, you can pay in person at the time you get your card. If you have a Visa or MasterCard, it can be credit or debit. You can just pay there. That is the easiest thing to do. If you don't have a Visa or MasterCard, then it's going to get a little more complex. I'm going to talk about it in the very next section. Um, long story short, you're going to have to fill out a form, take it to a bank, pay, get proof of payment, and then attach it to the INM packet. So don't forget your Visa or MasterCard. Number six on the list are photographs. That's something else we used to have to bring, get them done somewhere else, but now you don't. Those are all taken at immigration. So why they left them on this list, I have no idea. Now right down here, I'm going to switch back to English, makes it a little bit easier for you. If your residency visa is based on being a minister of worship, that sort of thing, then you're going to have an additional letter that you're going to have to bring along with you. It explains it here. I don't think that's going to apply to the majority of people who are watching this video. The next section here, if it's in English, will say duty payment. If it's not, it'll say pago de derecho. If you plan to pay at the INM office, you don't have to do anything in this section. The only thing that you might find interesting is it's going to tell you how much that residency card is going to cost you. We'll switch it back into English for you folks. The Minister of Worship here is on top. Next one down is Visitor for Adoption. Next one down is Temporary Resident for One Year. Now you may notice that it doesn't say Temporary Resident for Two Year, Three Year, Four Year. And you may have been told at the Mexican Consulate that you can come to Mexico and get your residency for four years right away. Well, they lied to you. Your first one is gonna be good for one year and that's why it's the only option on here. Now below that is permanent resident. You folks get permanent residency, that's all you're gonna pay. And the cool thing about permanent residency is it does not expire as long as you're not a juvenile, so you never have to renew it. If you're not gonna be paying at INM, you're gonna click on this button, Pago de Derecho, and you're going to go through all the steps to generate a payment form that you're going to take over to the bank. Um, I'm not going to go into that in this particular video. If you watch my video on how to renew a residency card, I go through the steps on filling out this particular form in that video. Now this is the official INM website and that is all you are required to bring. Still, when you're dealing with government offices in Mexico, they are consistently inconsistent. And it's very common in Mexico for individual offices to just add their own requirements. For example, you may go to one INM office and they want you to actually have proof of address. Or perhaps they'll want you to go ahead and bring that uh, basic format form that we no longer fill out. They may still want you to fill it out. Hopefully you're dealing with an office that's by the book and is only going by the requirements that show on the official site. So now that you have all your paperwork together, including copies of everything you're gonna need because government offices do not like to make copies for you, you're gonna to need to bring all of this documentation down to the INM office. This is where some of those inconsistencies that I mentioned will come in. You see, some INM offices take appointments, which is, I think, the way they should do it, while others have adopted more of a first come, first serve approach to handling INM applications. Now, that latter approach often requires folks to start lining up in the middle of the night if they hope to get in the next day. That's where that facilitator can come in handy. You see, they often have someone that they hire to stand in line all night for you, so you can just show up fresh as a daisy the next morning with your facilitator on your arm, take their place in line, and get everything done. But you do-it-yourselfers might find yourself standing out on that sidewalk in the middle of the night. I suggest bringing snacks and mosquito repellent. 
Because of these inconsistencies, you're going to have to check with the particular INM office you plan on visiting to see how they handle things. Well, that's it for today. I know the material was very dry, but hopefully you found it useful. And until next time, hasta luego.